Ben Roswell was Canada's uh, ambassador to Venezuela from 2014 to 2017. He's now serving as the president and director of research for the Canadian International Council. Uh, Mr. Roswell, good to see you. Thanks nice for coming to in here. to uh, speak with me today uh, about your appearance at the Senate Committee this morning and, and, the, and the state of things in, in Venezuela. And Canadians have been paying fairly close attention. Canada is playing a significant role in uh, the movement for change there. So let's talk about some of those things. Um, ultimately, the change in Venezuela uh, must reflect what the people there want. And I think uh, the comments you were making at the Senate today is that people in this country should be under no misapprehension that that we're not on the on the right side of this story as a government saying it's time for change there. Tell me about that. So I'd uh, argue that the approach Canada is taking in the uh, crisis in Venezuela is one of popular sovereignty. Sovereignty, yes, the people of Venezuela should be the ones that are choosing their fate, not any foreign power, but it shouldn't be just anyone in Venezuela. It's the citizens of Venezuela, not necessarily the ruler of the country. When the vast majority of citizens have demonstrated that they want a change uh, in government and uh, want the constitution to be restored after Maduro ripped it up more or less in 2017, I think it's right and proper for a country like ours um, to support them in that effort, and that's what we're doing. You, you uh, uh, we just chatted about it before we start the conversation. It, it was an emotional time for you this morning at this committee because you spent some time talking about uh, how can we know? Uh, as Canada's representative there, you, ma yeah. you made a passionate, impassioned uh, case for why, uh, why we know mm -hmm. that Canada's on the right side of this. Uh, d tell me how you can know that. There's no ambiguity at all when you're actually in Venezuela. Uh, and any Canadians that have doubts, just talk to Venezuelans, it's because the vast, vast majority of them um, want some kind of change. They, it's not an abstract uh, academic debate when you're in Venezuela. This is a country that has experienced a loss of half of its economy, mm -hmm. way worse than anything we went through in the Great Depression. What does that mean in people's lives? That means that people have lost loved ones because there's nothing in the hospitals to, to heal them if they, if they send them to emergency. It means that small children have died because they're really basic uh, medical uh, uh, malnutrition uh, problems. So there's a, um, a tangible impact that the policies of the Maduro government has had on the lives of everyday Venezuelans. And as a result, after many, many years of economic mismanagement and all this misery that's been created by it, really the, the, the country is more or less united in wanting to see the back of, uh, of Nicolas Maduro. How did it get this bad? I well, mean, that's, a, that's a, a question with a, probably a long answer, but is there a, <laughs> is, is there a way to explain to, to Canadians what, what's, you know, why in the last number of years this has disintegrated to where it is today? Well, this is an oil company, country. 96% uh, of all of its income comes from oil. So there's a major oil shock in 2014. The price just drops through the floor, and all of a sudden there's way less money coming into uh, the country. Now, that affected all the oil countries in the world. You know, Canada yeah, had Canada a well. bit of an impact as well, even though 3% of our income comes from oil. Um, but because the government has such a tight control on the economy, and because it siphons off so much of that oil money, to the party and to, um, and to the, the people close to Nicolas Maduro, the, the economy just wasn't very resilient in dealing with that massive uh, economic uh, crisis. Um, the government just sort of piled on after that, um, intru introducing a number of uh, economic measures um, that made it even more difficult for the economy to get back onto its, uh, onto its feet and became more and more cut off from the international economy. Eventually there were sanctions imposed in 2017, but that's years after the economic crisis had really started to, to, to take hold. And through this, as the Venezuelans were getting poorer and poorer and hungrier and hungrier, the demands for change got uh, got louder and louder, as it would in any country if there was a massive economic crisis. And the government's response at that point was to was to tighten up, was to remove one by one all the democratic rights that the citizens had, to the point that it had to eventually suspend the whole constitution, uh, because Maduro has made it clear he won't ever submit to an election uh, ever again. And that's where the, there's only one place for the pressure to go, out, and it's in the streets right now. And that's right. why Venezuela's through the streets. And so we have uh, the interim. The interim leader, uh, recognized by Canada, mm -hmm. the man in the picture behind you, Juan Guaido. Uh, Canada's uh, contributing more than $50 million worth of humanitarian relief and so on, and, and in many ways has been leading uh, uh, the push for change there, the recognition of Juan Guaido, uh, that, you know, the, the push that Maduro's got to go. Um, is there anything more Canada can be doing now? Like, where, where does this process go if 
outside countries such as ours have spoken up, said we want change, but change isn't coming. Well, you know what Canada has really uh, led has been the development of a regional consensus. Uh, so it's not Canada unilaterally acting right. uh, in support of the National Assembly and its leader, Juan Guaido. It's been careful work behind the scenes to make sure that there's a common hemispheric position. So all these countries, uh, other countries of Latin America coming together um, and acting in a coordinated fashion. And that's where Canada's, I think, diplomatic skill has, uh, has come forward. So um, the most of the countries of the region stand behind the citizens of Venezuela and their desire for, for political change. It's still not all. Mm -hmm. um, there are some holdouts. There's obviously some countries that will back Maduro to the help no matter what, no matter what the citizens want or don't want, um, like uh, Cuba, uh, Russia, China, for example. Right. But there's also a few in the Americas uh, that are trying to remain neutral in this dispute between the citizens and the and the and the regime of Nicolas Maduro that think that somehow they can be in a sort of uh, objective neutral position. Mexico is one of them uh, and Uruguay is, a, uh, is another. Um, that's causing tremendous resentment by the people of Venezuela and so I'm not sure how tenable that position is. But this is an area where I think Canada's skills as a bridge builder uh, and as a, as a talented um, multilateralist mm -hmm. might be able to build even greater consensus in support of the people of Venezuela. Finish on a, a couple of quick uh, questions here. Uh, there'll be some, there's lots to watch in Venezuela, something significant to watch this weekend. Uh, there will be attempts to get a convoy uh, mm -hmm. of humanitarian relief into Venezuela along the Colombian border, backed by, by, by the United States. The United States is threatening uh, has threatened uh, the, the the possibility of of, uh, of invasion, military intervention. So, what do you think happens? Is, is this a key thing to watch this weekend uh, with this convoy, and what happens? What's the likelihood any of that relief gets into Venezuela? Let me take the yep. military intervention issue off the table because I think that's a red herring. The president of the United States has been very irresponsible in doing whatever he can to get into the headlines. And so talking about military interventions accomplishes Donald Trump's goal, which is just to have, uh, have, uh, have headlines being written. To your mind, uh, about, not an option. But it's not, li uh, it's not likely to happen. I don't, you know, I don't have a crystal ball or anything, right. but it seems uh, very far-fetched that there would be a military intervention. Till, still terribly irresponsible for him to be talking about it. What this week, weekend reminds us is that this is fundamentally, at its core, a humanitarian crisis, an economic crisis. The people of Venezuela are hungry. They have not had uh, adequate nutrition for several years now. Uh, they are desperate for more food, for more medicine, for uh, improvement in the really basic needs uh, that they have. This weekend is a reminder that there is, there are um, supplies, there's food, there's medicine ready to pour into the country. And the only thing that's standing between the citizens that need that uh, and this humanitarian assistance is Nicolas Maduro. And will he continue to stand in the way of his people being fed? That's what we're going to see this and weekend. And what do we do? We continue to show that there's uh, a better path forward for Venezuela. There's humanitarian assistance. Eventually, we're going to need to talk about reconstructing the entire uh, economy. There's going to be, need to be a major international effort uh, to resuscitate the Venezuelan economy. That's something that uh, Canada uh, could also play a leadership uh, role in. I think we should actually be tell, tell, telling the Americans explicitly stop with the rhetoric about the military intervention. That's not helping anyone except Nicolas Maduro because people are sticking close to him um, uh, in, you know, in fears that there might be some military intervention. Yeah, it's, it's one thing that can galvanize even, even perhaps some opponents is the yeah. notion that, a, that an outside country uh, would try to come in and reg, you know, settle your affairs. Yeah, it's right? a tremendous gift to Nicolas Maduro. So if we could convince the Americans to, to, to stop with that rhetoric and just focus on the everyday basic economic needs of the citizens of Venezuela, then this should be resolved quicker, sooner rather than later. Ben Roswell, thanks for your time. Thank you.